Hello, my name is David Tavares. I'm a game designer and Unreal Engine 5 aficionado. Recently, CD Projekt Red came out with several group strategy update videos. Today, I will be reviewing them and reacting to what they say. This video is titled Long-Term Product Outlook. Hello and welcome to CD Projekt Group Strategy Update. I'm Adam Kiciński, and together with Piotr Nilubowicz and Michał Nowakowski, we will be talking about how the company has been evolving over the last 18 months and how we see our business and its future. We are excited to share with you our long-term outlook on key products we plan to focus on over the years to come. The foundations of our business and the values we embrace remain unchanged. We are here to create revolutionary role-playing games with memorable stories that inspire gamers. That's important right there. Revolutionary role-playing games with memorable sports stories that inspire gamers. The Witcher and Cyberpunk definitely meet those criteria. Um, and let's hear what else he has to say about the future of those games and more. This has brought us to where we are today. 20 years ago, when we started CD Projekt Red, it was just a handful of enthusiasts with a bold vision. We aim to create a huge, story-driven RPG in a universe known from fantasy books. Given the little experience and resources we had back then, it was like reaching for the stars. Today, we have two amazing, powerful franchises, The Witcher and Cyberpunk. So the Project Studios teams are over 1,100 people strong, among them over 700 developers. We have delivered four profound and memorable games that continue to appeal to more and more gamers. Speaking of which, I'm proud to say that Cyberpunk 2077 recently hit the mark of 20 million copies sold. With this, we have collectively sold over 85 million copies of our four flagship games so far. I think that's the point of why they're coming out with these videos right now. A lot of people are talking about this. This is not an original idea by me. Um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners came out on Netflix, and that stuffed a lot of uh, popularity for uh, uh, the the genre again. So a lot of people jumped right into Cyberpunk 2077. Sales were huge, player base was huge, um, and now's the time to brag if there's any time. So they want to talk to the donors, they want to talk to the investors. I mean, um, and of course, ex uh, you know, stoke the coals, make sure there's excitement with the with the player base. Um, Get some of that goodwill back, uh, which I I absolutely believe that CD Projekt is capable of, and that uh, they deserve it. Let's see how they plan to earn it. However, having said that, we remain as hungry and ambitious today as we were 20 years ago. Yep. Thanks to full creative and financial independence, we truly feel that our future is in our own hands. It's deeply motivating. Let's first look at what we've done since the last strategy update. Here is Piotr to tell you more. Thank you, Adam. Having learned our lessons from the Cyberpunk 2077 launch, we pushed for changes. Since last year's strategy update, in which the Red 2.0 transformation played a central role, we've been introducing significant improvements that lay the groundwork for the company's further growth. First, We've been working on improving our internal organization, focusing on building healthy, strong teams as they continue to grow. Second, the studio now uses agile work methodology and we keep iterating to further optimize our development processes. A key strategic decision was forming a long-term partnership with Epic Games. Unreal Engine will be the technology which we will build upon to deliver our creative vision CD Projekt Red's unique style and exceptional quality in open-world storytelling. In the longer run, it should also boost our effectiveness and predictability. Last year, our group joined forces with two new teams. The uh, before he talks about the teams, uh, let's talk about what he said so far. Um, yeah, they're, they're in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, that's the uh, engine that I, I like to spend a lot of my time with. I like to say that I'm, I'm a specialist in it, but there's so much more to learn for me, of course. It's it's such a robust um, system that uh, Epic Games has put together. Um, I agree that 
with where, where they're going, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to continuously build their own engine. And Real Engine 5 is capable of a lot. If they're working hand-in-hand -hand with Epic Games, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, he's also mentioned how big their teams are and um, how, how they're, how they're um, building up. Uh, I believe this is all a, uh, um, a justification for growth, um, which they're going to need to grow if they're going to do all these things that they're claiming that they're going to be doing. Um, now he's about to talk about that, actually, uh, the acquisition of North America. I'm a North American dev, dev. I am interested in working for the CD Projekt Red, if that's possible, but um, I'd like to learn more. Let's see what he has to say. The experienced developers at CD Projekt Red Vancouver Studio and the Boston-based Molasses Flat. And this year, we've welcomed two members to CD Projekt's management board. Paweł Zawodny, CTO and Head of Production, and Jeremiah Cohn, CMO and Head of the Franchise Development Team. Those initiatives supported one of our key goals to carry out parallel development of two AAA projects. We achieved this in early 2022. Being able to work on more than one project simultaneously is crucial for our future growth. And at the same time, We've been working hard on further supporting Cyberpunk 2077 by releasing substantial updates and its new gen edition. Finally, we've been extending our franchise flywheel, which includes the... Before he gets into this flywheel, which is actually a very fascinating concept, um, I'd, I'd, he, he mentions that he... Uh... Uh, the, the, the parallel development of the games. Um, honestly, people are criticizing them for this. They're like, you're going to parallel develop more games. How's that going to? How are you going to work on all that? But I mean, the, if you're if you're growing and expanding, you can either parallel growth, uh, parallel develop the games so that they're both being developed at once, or you could try to develop a single game faster. And I believe that strategy would be um, less advantageous if you're just trying to throw games out as fast as possible take the time to build games but if you if you want to have enough games to have like the, a larger growing company it's gonna have to have to be more games more sub studios and that's i believe the correct approach i believe a lot of the people aren't thinking of that and just being like no just focus on one game but it's like then that then the studio's stagnating studios got to grow um they're already making some of the largest games out there they don't if they if they just keep on trying to make the games bigger i'm not sure that that's a winning strategy i think they they know what they're talking about they know what they're doing uh this seems like the right call. Moving on. Recent release of our first very successful anime production, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Building on this foundation, we plan to expand our business in the following directions. Boosting our development abilities to deliver more content to gamers with a prime focus on quality. Introducing multiplayer experiences and further expanding our enduring franchises. At the same time, tolerance and respect for everyone around, gamers, team members, and business partners, but also the environment in which we operate, are at the heart of what we stand for. At CD Projekt, the environmental, social, and governance aspects are inherent parts of our business and our internal culture. We've provided a broader description of our approach to ESG, including actions already undertaken in a separate deep dive video session. I'll be covering that uh, video in another React video, just like this. Now, I'll tell you a bit about our employee-related ambitions. Everything we do and everything we create, universes, stories, and algorithms, comes from the minds of our people. Our team is the source of our strength. In order to develop the world's best video games and work on other ambitious projects, we need talented, passionate, and involved people. In other words, we must be seen as the employer of choice for top talent. To boost... I'm a Unreal 5 professional who would like to make an immersive game with deep story-driven narratives. Hello. Continuing. <laughs> So our competitiveness on the global market, besides creating healthy organization and offering involvement in delivering revolutionary games, we are redesigning our compensation system. It should also include an incentive scheme similar to those offered by our top global competitors. Attracting and retaining top talent is one thing. Enhancing their career development is another. We so top talent. Um... 
I think there's a problem in the video game industry at large um, where they're seeing that they only want to hire the most senior of senior, but there's only very few most senior and senior. And the reason that they're choosing the strategy, I believe, I would suspect, is a lot of people are leaving them. A lot of senior people. So they're going to have to, as he says, uh, support and expand the skills, um, actually grow some mid low to mid tier people up to the level that they are desiring here. Um, uh, I I think that's a good strategy, um, but they, they definitely need to focus on getting committed, good juniors in and not just focusing on seniors. Uh, by they, I don't mean CD Projekt Red, I mean the whole industry. Um, CD Projekt Red, I believe, is is, I believe what the, what he's trying to say here is that that's what they're going to do a little bit. They they don't want to say that out loud, just feeling like, uh, hey, if you never made a video game, come work for us, um, because that's not what they're looking for. Uh, they're looking for people that are going to go out of their way to get these skills on their own. Um, but of course, there's always expansion. There's always learning opportunities. Um, let's hear what they are. We are committed to supporting our people in expanding their skills and talents. What does this mean in practice for us? We aim to give each individual team member a chance to grow according to their development direction. We work with top-class mentors and trainers. And also, as leaders, we want to strive for managerial excellence to help our people realize their full potential. We also want to give our employees greater independence in making their own decisions. So a lot of stock footage here. I don't know if it's actual stock footage. It might be they might have shot this footage for, but around their own company. Um, but like this is like a break room. They're relaxing, com having little conversations. Uh, prior prior they showed some like animation studio. Uh, they showed some um, uh, meshes being created by some artists. Um, similar things to that. Uh, so they're trying to give like a broad idea. Of, there's a, a lot of departments, a lot of things to do. Um, a lot of professional work that needs to be done. Which of course also entails greater responsibility. We believe that this approach will promote stronger involvement and ownership resulting in even higher quality of our work. And speaking of quality, it's of paramount importance, also as far as motivation is concerned. <laughs> yeah, um, owning the work matters a lot when it comes to morale. Um, they're not using the words loyalty, they're not using the words morale, but I believe that's what they're getting at. Um, they want people who care not just about the product, um, but like really truly believe in it. Um, and like put their lives into it, blood, sweat, and tears, that kind of thing. Um, and that's not something that you could, they can just take for granted. I, th I think a lot of companies take that for granted. That's, that's what the industry is. It's a lot of boom bust. It's a lot of... Um, hey, we're just going to fire everyone right before the game releases kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure if CD Projekt Red has done that um, or done that often I don't, or at all, um, but it, it is something that's constant in the industry. And I know I know several people personally who have left the CD Projekt Red specifically um, because at the time it wasn't working out for their life. Um, but it, it's obviously a changed and growing in a company at this point, so... I believe that um, these videos sort of prove already that they have changed. Um, they're just uh, cultural. Their business culture has had gone through a drastic evolution, um, and I think uh, for the much for the better, for the better for sure. There is nothing more motivating than taking pride in your own products, mm -hmm. products with the ambition to inspire others. Now let's talk about our franchises. Mihao is here to tell you more. Thank you, Piotr. In our last year's strategy update, we presented the idea of the franchise flywheel, an ecosystem of comic books, TV, film, animation, merchandise, and spin-off games we are building around. Let's stop here for a second. Um, so I've heard other companies refer to something similar to this. They normally call it like um, a transmedia approach or something like that. Um, it's where the, uh, each part of the media um, bolsters and supports something else because a, a single individual not everyone just likes video games um some people don't like video games at all but it'd be good to get people who don't like a or b or c um this example it says games merchandise tv and film comics books 
you could just like one of those things you can like two of those things you can like all of those things um maybe you love the games and you play them all but you get tired of them for after a while you take a year off but during that year you still read the books and comics then you get back to the games after you get really excited that the next one comes out that kind of thing um it's smart it keeps people engaged uh it helps bolster the community um like any one of these fans um comic fans tv fans um people that just <laughs> like the cosplay or whatever or play the games um let's say if there was a convention and city project Red was there all those people might show up every single one of them even if they just have one of those interests and they would all get along and be part of the community um and that's just a smart business wise um great strategy and the right piece with proper execution every element adds momentum to the flywheel. The whole idea behind this is to expand our brands and help them reach new audiences and new heights. Being part of pop culture is crucial for a company's strategy. Jeremiah Khan talks about it more in a separate video. With millions of The Witcher and Cyberpunk fans looking for more content, we want to open up to external collaborations in development of new projects on top of our internal efforts. By doing so, we do not want to cut corners when it comes to quality and meeting gamers' expectations. We are already working. They were just showing some footage of uh, Edge Runners. Edge Runners uh, had a, a great reception. Um, it's almost universally acclaimed as a great uh, anime, even by people who don't like anime. I don't like anime, and I loved, I loved Edge Runners, and it really. It, I was one of the people who I saw Edge Runners, and I was like, "Oh, great! I got to reinstall Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven and do another playthrough." Um, it, it it's just really smart to throw that in here into the video um to to give an example of uh quality um i'll continue here <laughs> on a major project with a completely external team and we expect to have a few carefully selected more in the years to come mobile games will be a part of that approach as well for the first time in our history so um he said mobile games a lot of people jumped on that they're like does that mean all these projects you're announcing are all mobile games I'm guessing one of them is, and that there, you know, others are in plan, you know, um, I, I don't think there's a whole bunch of mobile games that are all going to be like pay to win or anything like that. I believe so, this CD Projekt Red is still going to do what they do best and just make bigger and better, like big immersive, um, RPGs with great open worlds, that kind of thing. We are opening up to working with external development teams to create new games within our franchise. You see, that's the second time he said that. I believe that the mobile games are being developed by external teams. CD Projekt Red proper, um, not their partners, uh, will do what CD Projekt Red does. Um, but, you know, if people want to make mobile games with their license, why not license it out? Um, although I'm not quite sure that's what he's saying. I think he's saying that they're actually working directly for CD Projekt Red for their projects. It's like we... CD Projekt Red... I was saying if I was CD Projekt Red... They would, uh, they they would definitely um want to build the world as big as possible and reach as many people as, as possible. Maybe people there are, like I was talking about the flywheel. Um, you can divide games into mobile games and non-mobile games and console games and everything. And some people only play mobile games, and if that's the only way to reach them and bring them into the fold, uh, get let them enjoy the world of The Witcher and the world of Cyberpunk and whatever else whatever else they got going. Um, have at it. It's it's all parallel development. It's not going to stop uh, the games I like to play. So go for it. We aim to work with experienced partners who would do justice to our brands and create fun and worthwhile experiences for our fans. We are doing all that to provide new and fun ways to interact with our brands and at the same time, let internal teams focus on what drives us as a company. Creating revolutionary role-playing games with memorable stories that inspire gamers around the world is what we're here for. Now let's go back to Adam. Thank you, Michal. This is the right moment to talk about the long-term outlook of our key products. For starters, this year we plan to release The Witcher 3 for new-gen consoles and in 2023, a major expansion for Cyberpunk 2077, titled Phantom Liberty. Now, allow me to introduce our production plans for further years. The first three releases in our pipeline will belong to The Witcher franchise and we've already started pre-production of two of them. The Molasses Flat game, codenamed Sirius, is set in the Witcher universe, 
and is being created with support from CD Projekt Red developers. It will differ. Moss Flood is a great example of what I was talking about with like a, another studio. They're, it's like this is actually owned by CD Projekt Red, but they're they're dividing uh, up into other studios. But there's also going to be studios that I believe don't, oh, not owned rather by uh, that will be working on like mobile games and that kind of thing. So, um, so there's different levels. There's going to be core CD Projekt Red and like the sub studios, and then there's going to be like satellite studios like Molasses Flood, and then. I guess that the higher, the further away level is going to be just like partnered studios that are working on CD Projekt Red games, but they're not owned by. So it's going to be this crazy large structure. Hopefully, it doesn't get too uh, unwieldy and bureaucratic and corporate. But uh, so far, I think I think it looks like they're holding it together, which is good. From our past productions, in the sense that it is targeted at a broader audience, along with a single player experience, gamers will. A lot of people were speculating on what, what being targeted to a broader audience means. Does that mean less gore and violence? Does it mean um, a more accessible device? Like, is that a mobile game? Does it mean just like a different um, aspect of the world? Maybe it's like a straight up political game or something. It could mean a lot of things. Um, could mean all those things. Um, people are still uh, focused on that, that term, though. Um, I seem to be just now. Be able to play with others, as Sirius will contain multiplayer. Another project. That's cool, the multiplayer aspect. So I'd imagine that being multiplayer, they're not going to make it too blood and gory. Um, probably something that's easy to get up and play, though. Codename Polaris is the game which opens the new Witcher saga further expands upon the open world storytelling known from the witcher 3 wild hunt so this project i would love to work on this project if you're looking for uh unreal engine 5 experts who like to critique uh your videos i guess i don't know what i'm saying there um yeah i'm available please uh give me a i was gonna say give me a call but you probably don't have my number so uh send me an email uh, i'll have that attached uh to this uh this video. There will be three below. games in the saga, and we aim to deliver them over a six year period starting from the release of Polaris. It's a bold statement, as we are talking about three large scale productions, but we really mean it, and we have a plan on how to achieve it. Both the second and the third installments will, in technological terms, benefit from the groundwork laid during development of Polaris. So they're looking at Unreal Engine 5 here. Um, yeah, that's 5. Um, so this is just like a tree object, and uh, this is its location, rotation, scale, like standard stuff. Um, I think this might just be generic. Uh, I don't think this is actually the game. This is just generic footage of Unreal Engine as he's talking about it. But uh, from what I understand, they are in fact working directly with Unreal, uh, sorry, uh, Unreal Engine, the company under epic games um to tweak it and make it better not only will this help city project red make the next witcher game probably the next cyberpunk game i'd imagine um it's gonna help the world because uh the world um all all indie a lot of indie developers use unreal engine 5 as well a lot of other companies use unreal engine 5 um they're gonna help them uh uh, make their open world things better, make their graphics better. Um, it's going to be like a, a, a free testing of the engine as, we as they build it and they meet requirements. And these are things that, since Unreal Engine is free up to a million dollars of sales, um, most indie devs can just benefit from this. It's amazing. It's a, a great democratization move by two major companies, CD Projekt Red and Epic Games. Um, working together. In this way, we aim to smoothen the development process, while at the same time staying creatively ambitious. The next project, codenamed Canis Majoris, will be another full-fledged Witcher production. It will be created by an external team that Michał just spoke about, headed by experienced developers who have worked on earlier Witcher games. Tech-wise, we plan to use Unreal Engine 5 and the toolset we are creating for Polaris. As you have seen, there is a lot happening in the world of The Witcher. Now, let's jump into the dystopian future 
Another project that we want to focus on is Orion. Again, it's a code name. The next cyberpunk game that will fully unleash the potential that this universe offers. I would also very much like to work on Orion. I believe this is the North American team. I'm a North American. You can just slip me right in there. Help me, uh, let me uh, work on Orion. Um, I've made games before in Unreal Engine 4, and I'm making games in Unreal Engine 5, and uh, if you want to check out my portfolio, um, I've sent you several resumes, so please uh, please check them out um, and uh, email me. Our ambitious plans will require a lot of work, dedication, and further growth of the team. Speaking of which, I have important news to share. We are creating a new studio based in North America, next to the Molasses Lab, which will remain solely focused on Sirius. We are setting up a team in Boston that together with our existing Vancouver-based team will establish CD Projekt Red. Okay, so C Project Med North America. Right now, I'm located in Washington State, so like really close to Vancouver Hub, but I'm in the United States. Um, actually, I think I think this is angled a bit. Oh, I see. They're using an interesting projection. Um, I'm in the United States, so would I work in the Boston Hub or would I work in the Vancouver Hub? Because I'm like here. Um, I could move to Boston. I'd be willing to do that. I can work remotely. I could just come into the Vancouver office every once in a while. You know, lots of options with me. Um... But uh, I'm curious as why they chose Boston. Is it just because the molasses flood was there? Um, uh, does Boston have good tech? I'll have to look into that. Um, I don't think it had that great of a reputation. Um, maybe it does. Maybe they've got new money there. That that'd be pretty cool. Um, I, it's it's great when you can get like government investments into like growing studios or tech firms and all that. Um, Red continue. North America. This studio will be in charge of leading development of our... When they say next to the Molasses Flood Studio in Boston, do they mean literally it's like the same building or something, or like the building across the street? That's pretty interesting. Right. This move will enable us to fully draw upon the North American talent. But even that isn't everything we've got in store for the coming years. Let's have a sneak peek at a completely North new American endeavor. Talent. Michal is here again to tell you more. I am excited to announce that CD Projekt Red has begun creative exploration on a third entirely distinct IP, codename Hayden. So I believe they mentioned this is their original IP. So I was thinking like, what could this be? Could this be like World of Darkness? Could this be something else? Like, no, 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 it's original. It's not, it, they won't tell us yet. We, we won't know what it is. Um, my fingers are crossed for an urban fantasy. Um, that would be distinct from their cyberpunk and fantasy things, uh, medieval fantasy. Um, but it would kind of be like both of them together. Could be completely new. Could be in space with aliens or something. Who knows? Uh, let's see what it has to say about it. We had started thinking about it a few years ago. Early stage conceptual works commenced in 2021. And for the first time in our history, the IP is being incubated entirely within Cele Project. It is important to understand that we are not making a game just yet. We are working on the foundation of this new setting. That will be all about the new games, but we have more to share with you today. While we believe that our games and worlds we create within them are telling great stories that impact many, we also believe that letting gamers interact with each other will create new experiences for them. By doing so, we do not want to make the single player experience. So they keep on showing these shots of uh, like, shows or conventions or something like that uh by the way i'm a convention professional uh the it manager for gen con llc it's the you know not to brag it's just the largest jet gaming uh, uh tabletop convention in the world uh, that i put on uh, with my team at gen con um not that that's the industry i'm trying to get into i want to make video games now a little bit of a pivot um but i have that expertise if you need that continuing appearance is smaller in any way because of that direction. What is important, UE5, our new engine offers a solid tech framework, allowing us to develop okay, multiplayer gosh. for most of our future titles. Our approach to developing online competences and a broad- 
I'm actually worried about this. They keep on mentioning multiplayer. They're like, we want to make multiplayer this. We want to see if I, I listened to a um, investor call earlier, and they they were saying we want to make it available so that uh, uh we could potentially turn all these games into multiplayer. Um, I enjoy playing multiplayer games. Um, I think the single player focus of CD Projekt Red's past games should be paramount, though. I think it's still going to be paramount to them and very important that the single player experience comes before the multiplayer. Um, I'm just hoping that is the case and they're not just going to be like, you know, eh, who cares about, you know, any single player story, just uh, as long as we can all slash each other and blow stuff up or whatever the game uh, play is. But um, yeah, because a lot of multiplayer games just have gotten to like, it, it's just nothing but like, lights flashing and, pe and scores and people like competing and I, I don't want to turn this to esports um but i love multiplayer experiences i love playing games with my friends um and i hope that's what they're going for broad overview of the technological changes occurring at the group are presented by board members responsible for these respective fields pavel zavodny and piotr karbowski they do that in a separate video Going back to our idea of expanding brands in different pop culture fields, we continue to explore the motion picture and TV series market. Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, created with Studio Trigger in Japan and aired globally through Netflix, has proven that creating high quality additional content for the fans of RIPs is the way to go, both from a perspective of the brand expansion and the business side of things. We have many more ideas and we will be happy to share with you more. On that note, the Witcher animation, uh, which was not an anime, but it was animated, uh, was also phenomenal. Phenomenal. What was it called? Like Brotherhood of the Wolf or Night of the Wolf, something like that. Um, and I do enjoy the Witcher TV series with Henry Cavill. Um, I don't think it has a, a, as big of a height as of, of uh, uh, wow, this was amazing, but it, it's also a full series, so there could be longer uh more enjoyment more fandom to that um and honestly I, I i'd take the witcher series over the other ones because of that but I, i'd say that the, the other ones had more like tight succinct stories that um i don't think people talked about the witcher animation um nearly as much uh, uh, enough i mean um because i think it was phenomenal similar to uh um how good edge runners was for when the time is right as you can see we have quite a bit on our hands in the years to come, we want to bring many new projects to our fans around the world. Some internal, some external, and all of them need to be high quality. To do all that, we are opening up another North American team. We are beginning our work on the third IP, we are planning to add multiplayer to some of our future titles, and we are planning to do more in the area of TV and film. That is a lot to prove, but we believe that with the right awesome. talent, right brands, right strategy, and the right vision, we are well prepared for the goals we set for ourselves. And now, let's go back to Adam. All right, when we think about CD Projekt looking to new horizons, we see three unique, powerful, and enduring franchises. In their centers, we see a growing number of games with memorable single-player stories extended to multiplayer experience. Okay, yeah, he's, he's uh... Putting me to rest with this line, memorable single player stories extended to multiplayer experience. So this is primary, secondary. I'm cool with that. I am cool with that. On top of that, we see new content and products enhancing ways of experiencing our universes. With all of this, our franchise wheels will spin up gaining more and more momentum. We see CD Projekt as a growing force shaped by our teams taking pride in the games they deliver and bold in their ambitions. We experiment, innovate, and create, and we are still all about reaching for the stars. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Uh, thank you um, for having this. Um, I will see you in, next time for sure. I'll be doing more reviews. Um, I wanted to go back. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to find it. Um, but I did notice, and I wanted to mention this, um, that it comes to their marketing strategy. Um, in fact, uh, uh, when when they sh were showing the Edge Runners uh, before, 
and they were overlaying the scenes in Edge Runners with CD with uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Um, that goes to a design philosophy that you don't see very much anymore. Um, you'll see a lot of franchises and like big companies that make stuff. They'll just be like they'll come out with a new version of something, and they'll be like, "This is separate. Don't worry about the prior story. There's no continuity. Um, this is an original work. You should appreciate the art." And it's like, yeah, okay, I can appreciate the art, but if you were going to make something completely unique and new, why use the franchise at all? Why not make up your own IP? Um, and I think uh, uh, people push back up against that and should be like, well, people should be able to do whatever they want with their own uh, artistic integrity or something. And it's like, sure, uh, I mean, of course, but, um, or, or, hear me out, you can do what they did with Cyberpunk 2077, rolling into edge runners and match like make it make it work like it's a completely different medium it's a new artistic integrity uh it's a new story that didn't take place in the video game prior um but they made it they made the video they made the edge runners anime match the world like they can overlay a lot of the scenes uh the characters are there with similar personalities um they maintain a lot of continuity um, and then in turn, they did a patch in the video game where the, the events of the anime happened and you can like find like uh, items and mentions of the characters and stuff like that. Uh, that's phenomenal. You don't see that. You don't see this um, uh, what in um, HTTP RGPG world, tabletop uh, role playing game world, you'd call a meta plot um, where there's like continuity. Um, people like to break up continuity with a lot of things. And I commend. CD Projekt Red for running it with it that way. That's, I believe, the preferred method. I won't say correct, it's just personal preference at least. I like to maintain integrity of the franchise and the um, meta plot. So, anyway, that concludes my review of the long term product uh, overlook. And uh, thank you for listening. See you in the next one. Goodbye.